Hi Cancerians, welcome to your mid-month check-in for January 2024. Thank you as always to everyone who watches, likes, shares, comments on the videos and subscribes to the channel. And if you want a personal reading, see the info in the description box below the video. So if you follow the channel or you're familiar with the channel, you may have noticed some changes in the schedule of how I'm putting the videos out. I've just had to adapt things um, to get a better balance with doing the readings and just everything else I've got to do in life as well. So that's that's the reason for that. These are from the Oracle decks that I'm going to be using for today's reading. So we're going to begin with a message from African Goddess Rising. First of all, um, as usual, the messages are for Cancer, Sun, Moon and Rising as well. So let's get your main message for the mid-month check-in. So Cancer, Sun, Moon and Rising, what do we need to know? That was quick. We have Mama, I'm just going to struggle with this one, the Jumbo Shine. Okay, that's a nice message. You know what? I feel like I don't even feel like I've ever seen this message before. I must have because I do use the deck, not as often as others. But um, yeah, I don't, I feel like I haven't seen that in ages. Is that, a, what are these? Are these goats? I mean, we are in Capricorn season, aren't we? This is a, I mean, this deck felt like a very earthy deck to use along with the um, Witch's Kitchen deck, but this deck in particular, this card in particular, should I say, is really earthy. I'm trying to figure out if that's a goat. Right, let's see if it says in the book. Um, well, in a minute, let me get your tarot cards out first of all. So, Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising. What's, what else do we need to know about the main theme? We have the Nine of Wands, as you can see. Past energies. You've got the Two of Pentacles. Current or present energies. Is that the Nine of Swords? Okay. And potential future energy. I will take them and I feel like they need to be upright. So I'm going to put them upright, regardless of whatever they are. Right, Two of Swords. Six of Cups. Okay, that is a real mixed bag of um, energies there. I mean, I to be honest, in these three here, I can see a bit of um, struggle. I can see some struggle. Um, but let's see what comes out. Let's read the book first. So 32. And five, yeah, five, three and two, it's five, isn't it? And I don't know why I keep bringing up numbers this month. I'm not usually that fussed by numbers, although I have said I have been haunted. I got, last year, I got haunted by the number 23 a lot. I'm wondering if it was just because it was 2023, um, like ridiculously. I mean, I try not to pay too much attention to numbers, although I am one of those people that sees 11, 11 quite a lot, but I just ignore it now, to be honest. But yeah, the number 23 stood out so much. It was absolutely insane. Um, but yeah, three and two, it's five. And five is like the challenge, cards of challenges in um in the tarot. And I mentioned struggle, didn't I? But anyway, right, Mama Jumbo. Goddess of Shine, Goddess Mama de Jumbo glitters as guardian of the lush green forest of Guinea-Bissau. If her name sounds familiar, it is because Mama Jumbo's name was misconstrued by culliners and replaced with the term Mumbo Jumbo, meaning um, gibberish. Still, she shines. Mama Jumbo's guidance says, you were born to shine, be seen, be heard, be a movement. We need to know your name. We want to learn your dance. Daring to rise and shine starts with the courage to be seen and heard. Your story matters and someone needs to hear it. Fear of shining brightly keeps you in the shadows, hiding and shrinking. There is no way to claim your voice and avoid rejection, criticism and judgment. But you are not for everybody. If everyone likes you, you are not really being you. The goddess declaration says, I am ready to be seen and heard. Yeah, to be honest, those energies that, that were mentioned in the book, so hiding and shrinking, I'm getting that from that nine. I mean, nine of ones is literally shrinking to the ground, isn't it? Um, nine of swords, it's worry, isn't it? It's stress. Hiding, if you're stressed, sometimes we hide. We can hide when we get stressed. Um, ju judgment seems to be a feeling I'm getting in this nine of ones card as well. You know, like if somebody puts someone down and it, it sends them to their knees, it's almost giving me that kind of vibe. Um, 
but let's let's get um clarifiers and see where it goes where we go with this so yeah it's like a need to um to shine and almost to like rise above i'm feeling as well rise above whatever is going on um that may be making you feel small i kind of want to say right nine of wands why is the nine of wands there as like a main main energy we've got the devil We also have the High Priestess. This is really, with that High Priestess there, it's, it's really giving me this sense so far of like needing to um, listen to your inner voice. So, you know, like if you were in a situation where someone was putting you down or something, um, something about listening to your inner voice. I mean, obviously, you'd probably want to stand up to them if you're putting them down but it's the inner voice I guess what it is it's where you know like if people say things to put you down and it sticks with you and then all you can hear is their voice in your head putting you down it's like shut that down use your inner voice to shut that down and listen to your own inner voice like I guess there's a million examples you could come up with of people putting you down in any way shape or form but it's it's um pep talking yourself in your own mind in with your own inner voice to to dismiss whatever they've said that has put you down Let's see what else comes out here. The Nine of Wands. I mean, sometimes it can. There's a few different meanings of the Nine of Wands. For me, it can be the card of still standing. Um, it can be about resilience sometimes. And maybe this is a representation of needing that resilience to shine as well. We've got the Temperance card. Let's just get one more. And to me, that really goes with that. In fact, it goes with all of it, with the High Priestess as well, as an energy of... Um, listening to the inner voice if anyone puts you down because you you're the one that has to maintain your own peace of mind don't you nobody else can maintain that for you so yeah so the devil being in reverse it would be the resilience to overcome um things like that yeah that is an energy of shining it's it's oh it's it's success as well it's overcoming it's an energy of overcoming so it might not be specifically about people putting you down but that's just one example that i could give where anything that makes you hide shrink um feel judged whatever it's it's the power of your inner voice um the yeah the power of your inner voice to overcome all of that to help you shine okay i don't need to sub clarify any of that um as a main energy let's look at the two of pentacles why is the two of pentacles there please as a past energy we have the four of swords Nine of Pentacles. Queen of Cups. Let me just see what else. I've got a big thought on this and I just want to see what the last card is that comes out here because this is interesting. Eight of Pentacles, okay, that's not what I was thinking, but okay. Let me just have a look at the Eight of Pentacles on its own because that's a wild card here now. Oh, okay, yep, I think I get what it means actually. I think I get what it means. Okay, that makes, makes it make sense. The, the two of pentacles, it for me, it kind of literally feels like one of the pentacles is the hermit and the other is pentacle is the sun. Um, so how do I how do I describe this feeling now? It's almost like going in and out of your cave and or in and out of your sanctuary um, in the past. So you may you may have had to work hard on. Um, I don't even know how to explain what I'm thinking now, but I've got a big thought on it. You know, like in terms of interactions with people, again, if you've had people that have put you down or things, situations that have knocked your confidence, it's sort of when that happens, it's like where you go back into your sanctuary, whether it's you're hiding away because you feel ashamed, embarrassed, deeply hurt, or it's like, I just need a, a time to myself. I need to kind of get over this. I need to overcome this. And then, you know, you go back into your cave 
whether it is that you're literally hiding away and wanting to keep to yourself, but then obviously eventually you got to come back out at some point, or whether it is you literally go into your cave or your sanctuary to um to kind of boost yourself back up and then you can come back out and shine. Those are the energies, but it's like work with that eight of pentacles. It's work like in order to, in order to be around people and collaborate and connect with people, it's having to put in a lot of work to do that, to, um, to go back and forth, to have the strength to go into your cave. So you've got the strength to come back out and deal with people like periods of respite. Um, this feels like the respite here. So, well, it all does really. So you've got the Four of Swords, which is about rest. The Nine of Pentacles, it is like your sanctuary. It's your safe place, isn't it? And then you, the Queen of Cups is your emotions. It's that sanctuary where you can feel your emotions in peace. Um, well, probably not in peace if you're stressed out, but, you know, you can address all of that. And then, as I say, for some of you, it would be that that's where you get to do the work and prepare yourself to come back out, um, the inner work with the Hermit there. So you may have had to do that quite a lot. Um you may already have quite a bit of resilience, but then at the end of the day, there will always be situations where we've got to deal with things that can knock our confidence or where people can put us down. So it's like a continual process. So I'll leave that there because this, um, that's as much as I can get for the past energy. Let's see what's going on in the present. So you may be, even if you have done some work on the whole pep talking yourself and listening to your inner voice, it might be a time where you're going through another phase like that now, potentially with the um, Nine of Swords. Okay, but with me, I've lost some cards on the floor. Right, I've lost one card on the floor. So let's look at the Nine of Swords. So this may be, it could potentially be one of those moments where you kind of either are back in your cave or you want to go back in your cave. Five of Cups, okay. You've got the Six of Swords. What else comes up for this? Six of Pentacles. Hell no, that was too much. I will take the King of Cups, but the rest of them, bear with me while I kind of do a recovery operation now because there's cards everywhere. Um, Actually, it's not even that many, is it? It's the Page of Pentacles. I'm, I'm not going to keep them, but it was the seven, Page of Pentacles and Seven of Cups. Trying to make my life easier by not over... Well, I don't think I can ever help them over clarifying, but I'm trying to reduce it because I know it's a, it's a habit and it doesn't help <laughs> sometimes. Well, if you've watched readings of mine before, you will know that I often speak of this King of Cups of being about um, emotional maturity, emotional intelligence and emotional resilience. And that is here. So for some of you, it could be that you are in a bit of a state of anxiety, worry, something's gone down, basically, and it's just stressed you out. Um, disappointed you even hurt your feelings with the Five of Cups there. However, you may be wanting to kind of, you may be in that kind of a stronger sort of resilient phase of, right, I know this is happening. It's making me feel like shit and I want to get past it. I want to be done with it. Um, you you want to bring the balance back in to your life and address the emotions as maturely as possible. That's one message that's coming in. Um, someone might, there could be someone out there who's actually avoiding dealing with the feelings, to be honest, where... You know, like where you kind of want to get over something and be done with it, but you don't want to have to address it, which like pushing it down. Um, somebody out there might be doing that. But for, for the most part, it kind of looks like wanting to restore peace, like restore. You know, you're going through a, a something and you want to restore your peace and your peace of mind and get the balance back and kind of be able to come back out of the cave stronger. Um, let's look at the Six of Swords out of curiosity. We've got the Two of Wands, and we also have the Seven of Swords and the Ace of Cups. So there is an escape energy there, an and energy of wanting to move on and escape, but it, it's the, there is that sense of self-love there as well. As I said, for the although there may be someone who's just trying to, um, who might be wanting to bypass it, or there might be more than one person who wants to rather bypass it than fully address it it looks like for the most part what's showing up is wanting to kind of properly 
deal with it out of self-love. Um, if you are hurting, obviously you want to move on. You want to move on from that. Let's look at the Six of Pentacles. If it is, if there is something that's hurt you specifically involving people or another person, obviously you want to, um, as much as you address your own emotions in the situation, you want to be able to, to re-engage with people in a way that is fairer to you and it's more balanced with equal give and take and respect and just better treatment overall, fair treatment. You've got the Queen of Swords. That speaks of assertiveness, that does to me. So you may be sort of thinking to yourself, you know what, I want to come out of the other end of this more assertive and with stronger boundaries in place so that people cannot, you know. I was going to say very bluntly then fuck with you, but <laughs> take it as you will. Right, we've got the death card. What else after that? Two of cups. And let's get one more. Okay, so yeah, it's the same thing. If there's, if it's relating to how you deal with other people, whether it is in your personal life, work, whatever, you just want more, but you want things to transform so that you, as I say, you can be more assertive and have stronger boundaries and have better relationships with people, whether are, whether they are professional or personal relationships. So where there's more understanding, again, that word respect. Yeah, it's more of a stable foundation as well within the relationships. Okay, so yeah, overall as a current energy, it just looks like you, you may be, you are going through a rough time. You may be going through a bit of stress, anxiety, worry, um, but wanting to come out of the other end better off, stronger. And I don't know why I feel the need to, need to say this, because I don't, I mean, obviously, you know, the messages are for sun, moon and rising. But if this reading doesn't resonate, then, you know, you're welcome to watch um, the, if, you, if your sun, moon and ri or rising sign is a different sign from Cancer, you're welcome to watch that as well. I don't know why I feel the need to point that out. I've not felt the need to do that much in videos, but for this one, I kind of feel like I do. I don't know why. Um, right, let's look at the potential future energy. So I've got the two of swords and the six of cups. I don't know why that could that could be discernment um, coming up in the future, but let's see. You know, like where you learn from past experiences about how to be more discerning. Um, but let's let's have a look at that. So two of swords, six of cups. And just to point out as well, I don't know, I really don't know why I'm feeling the need to say this, but not obviously not all res resonates, not all readings resonate. Like even if you watch your sun, the videos for your sun, moon and rising signs, sometimes it just won't resonate because it's general. Um, it is what it is. It's same with every, I think most readers say that anyway, but yeah, I don't know. I really don't know why I'm feeling the need to point that out. Um, because I think a lot of people are aware of that anyway. Right, we've got the Seven of Pentacles. Um, this one was first, I think. Seven of Swords, Nine of Swords. Okay, you could very well could be about discernment with all the ones that are coming out here so far. Let's get one more. Page of Pentacles. Okay, I'm going to look. I feel like these are very much about discernment, but I want to look at that Page of Pentacles because that's a weird one for me. Why is the page? Okay. Ace of Wands. Knight of Pentacles. Let's just get one more for that. Ten of Swords. Just one more. Okay, yeah, perfect. I do know what they mean, but sometimes, you know, and you, you know what it means and then you get another card and then it's like, oh shit, that's kind of put a spanner in the works now and kind of giving it a different meaning so you need something else, right. So yeah, overall, it feels like that Two of Swords and Six of Cups is future-wise as a potential future energy of being more discerning learning from past experiences especially in with people but also situations as well you've got two cards here of is it worth it um so seven of pentacles is usually about is it worth the time and effort seven of swords it's often about risk it can be about risk um like is it worth taking a risk with something obviously it can be about escape as well um but there's something that's making me think is it's like, is it worth mentally engaging or putting myself through this? Because you've got the nine of swords next to it. You know, like if you if there's 
involvements or acquaintances you have and it feels like mental torture like obviously you can be assertive with people but sometimes even that doesn't work does it um and or it, there are situations where actually you you've um engaged with someone but you actually don't have to engage with them and it's like if you don't have to engage with someone why even put up with that you know you've got the page of pentacles there this almost feels like using what you've learned but also continuing to learn from those experiences as well you know learning when to walk away um this ace of wands it kind of feels like I don't want to say honouring yourself, but that's the only kind of thing I can that comes to mind. Um, I can't think of another way of putting that apart from honouring yourself, even though that's not what the Ace of Wands would typically mean. I guess that comes in with that shine energy, like your spark, your passion. If someone pisses you off, um, you're within your rights to stand up for yourself, walk away, you know, whatever you've got to do. That's your spark there. That's your shine. You've got the Knight of Pentacles there. But with the Knight of Pentacles being with the Ten of Swords, Page of Swords, that does feel like honouring yourself. It does feel like honouring yourself, committing committing to, to what your values are, committing to shining um, and being who you are and being yourself and not having to tolerate bullshit, basically. Um, and also, if you have to walk away from situations, painful situations, then learning from that as well. So, yeah, overall, it's more of a... Be, being and becoming more discerning really that's all I have to say actually about that so let's get you some advice um yeah let's get you some advice here and I did have a title in mind for this and I've completely forgotten it now but let's see what comes up as your advice so message from the witch's kitchen deck What's the final advice from the Witch's Kitchen deck for you? Final advice for Cancer, Sun, Moon and Rising. Repel, I love that one. <laughs> it's the garlic card. This came up for another sign as well. This is this is it. This is the discernment. This is the repel. By shining your light and being yourself, if you do come into contact with people or situations that are just absolutely taking the piss, by being yourself, it's kind of like you're repelled. Oh, God, I'm thinking of The Exorcist. Um, I actually watched the new version of The Exorcist um, over the weekend, so that's probably why it's in mind. But, you know, that whole The Power of Christ. What is it? The Power of... Not The Power of Christ repels you. Um, I can't remember them. You know, I actually have never watched the full... The, the old version of The Exorcist fully and I'm an absolute horror I love horror films and for some reason I've never watched the full version of The Exorcist not because I don't want to I do want to I just haven't I don't know I haven't had the opportunity even if it comes on TV I'll watch a bit but it's on so late at night I'm like tired so but yeah I can't remember the exact way they say it now in The Exorcist but repel I love that let's read that message for you think it might be the power of Christ compels you or something I don't know right garlic so it says <laughs> okay perfect when you are feeling vexed by unwanted and all-consuming energies it's time to invite some raw garlic oh god this is okay I'm going to share a joke about this at the end it's time to invite some raw garlic into your kitchen sprinkle me in dishes place me above your door in puppets or around your neck and I will rid you of malevolent spirits, demonic possession and anyone who is draining your very life force. My history is steeped in Eastern European folklore, although I go back much farther, further than that. Having been used as a charm to repel evil by the ancient Egyptians, as well as for medicinal benefits, my anti-inflammatory properties protect the heart. So take capsules of meat daily to assist with any blood pressure and cholesterol concerns and to boost the function of your immune system. To stimulate blood flow and incite arousal, eat me raw if you dare, and ingest my pungent aromatic and aphrodisiac powers to invoke a night of stimulated passion. Yeah, that bit cracks me off at the end. So, little joke, well, it's probably not it's probably not funny to anyone but me, is. Right, so after I read this message in, I don't know which reading it was I did, I can't remember, it could have been Cap Capricorn or something. Um, it reminded me of um, my mum, 
she's got a she um she needs to sort of take care of her health so I took a picture of it and sent her the message and was saying because I had an aunt as well actually who's passed away now and she had heart problems as well and she used to drink garlic tea so I sent the image to my mum and just put in oh, I just remembered auntie used to um used to drink the tea and it might if you if you feel like this might benefit you as well you know um here it is which she's aware of it anyway but yeah I just thought I'd send it to her and then I sent her a little joke I was saying I don't know about the end part though about um about using it as an aphrodisiac because ga raw garlic as an aphrodisiac. I've already said I absolutely love the taste of garlic cooked in food, but raw garlic as an aphrodisiac. If anybody's ever tried that and it worked, I'd love to hear that story. It's just thinking of the smell of it as much as I love it. Raw garlic smell and passion. I don't know how that works together. Anyway, I sent that to my mum. Guess what sign my mother is? She is a Cancerian. <laughs> so um, yeah, that's interesting. I will leave your message there though. So feel free to like, share, comment on the video or subscribe to the channel. If you want a personal reading, see the info in the description box. But thank you very much for watching and take care.